Hi everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna take a look at our docker file again and improve it even further uh, and this time it's not about the size it's about the speed that it takes to build the docker file or to actually build the uh, the image. Um, before we do that although a quick shout out to Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Mehugu um, who just created a pull request which has been merged an hour ago when I made this video. He basically changed the base image from Python 3.5 slim to Python 3.6 slim based on stretch because there was an issue with the entry point script that I presented. Thanks again mate and obviously guys feel welcome to make pull requests if you have any issues with the with the stuff and you find a fix for it it's probably even helping some other people uh, that run into the same issue all right um, let's take a look at our docker file that we have here in our dev python docker file directory basically what are we doing here we are inheriting from the base image python 3.6 from debian stretch um, I've set myself as the maintainer. I'm copying the app code. I'm switching into that directory by using work here. I'm running pip install and I'm copying my entry point and making sure the entry point has the right permissions. And last but not least, I'm defining the entry point. So far, so good. Now, uh, I've built the image before, so let's just make sure it is still built. I'm gonna build just the Python image uh, because I wanna time it. But as you can see, even the last command step eight is being pulled from a cache. It's an internal cache that Docker has on your machine um, because all the steps that are in here have already been processed once with uh, the context of that directory. So what happens now if I go into tickets, settings, base py and change something? For instance, I don't wanna call my log debug log, I wanna call it log.log .log for whatever reason. And if I call docker compose build now, just for the Python image, I'm gonna time it, uh, that's the time. Uh, if What happens if I do that? It basically, you see, it's using maintainer. That's the second statement up here from cache. But as soon as I call copy, it's obviously not working from a cache again. It's copying it directly from disk. And by doing that here, all the other commands that are following below are also have to be reprocessed. And the whole thing means also pip install needs to be redone and that takes a while. As you can see, it's still running. I've got a quite fast computer. Uh, it still takes a while because it just involves a lot of components that need to be processed. So in the end, we are here with 36 seconds. Fine, okay, I have a new image. If I run it again, you will see that everything is coming from a cache and we're at one second. So 36 seconds versus one second. Obviously, such a change uh, of, of just changing a, a string shouldn't take 36 seconds. So what's wrong with that? Well, the first thing is we should move work here above copy app. I mean, every command adds, uh, adds some delay basically. So that's one of that. It's not the main contributor, obviously. So pip install is the main contributor, but for pip install to work, we need the app directory. It's not entirely true. Actually, we need app requirements. So what we could do is we could just copy app requirements to app requirements. And then what we could do is run pip install afterwards. And we still need to copy the app directory. Although for instance, if you wanna push a production image to Docker Hub, um, then it needs to contain the source code. Yeah? So we can copy app to app afterwards. It doesn't matter that you override app requirements here with uh, that statement because there should be nothing in that folder anyway, uh, uh, except for the files that have been in here. And let's just see what that does now. Um, obviously, this is going to be a full rebuild. So the first time you're going to do that, it's going to also take, I don't know, 36 seconds, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. We'll see. As you can see, it's uh, running pip install now. You can see the output of pip install here. But hopefully what we will see in the next step is if we change the source code again and uh, run docker compose build again, it will use pip install from cache because at this point we haven't copied anything of the source code, just the requirement files. And the source code is copied here. All right, yeah, 35 seconds, that's expected. Obviously, if we run it again, it's gonna be super fast because everything is coming from cache again, it's fine. 
So now let's say I don't want to log into log.log, but I want to log into output.log. And let's rebuild. So we've seen this would have taken 36 seconds before, but now as you can see, pip install is coming from cache as promised, and it's just copying the app directory and the entry point script. And in the end, it takes 4.2 seconds. So that's an improvement. Now, obviously the next step where we can improve on is uh, like you would say, why do you need to copy the entry point script at the bottom? It's a static file, or at least it should never change. You set it up once and that's it. So obviously we can make that be right at the top here. We need to build it once now. It's gonna take 36 seconds or 35 seconds because we're doing a full rebuild again because this on the top influences all the commands that are coming afterwards. As you can see, pip install is being executed again. Let's see, we're almost there. We've installed it, cool. And copying the app and 30 seconds even. So maybe pip install was a little bit faster. We don't know. Um, there's always the variable of internet connection, disk speed, etc. But 30 seconds is still unacceptable. Um, but now let's just change this again to output 3.log. So we're changing the source code again. And we're building again. And you can see it's two seconds, less than two seconds. Maybe it was random. Let's try it again. Two seconds. Two seconds, around two seconds. So that's definitely faster than what we had before. So everything that you can move above the copy of the app is fine. Um, so by using that, we have improved the build time of our Docker image if we just change the source code, obviously, if we change the requirement. So let's say I wanna move from Django 1.11 to Django 2.2, .2, um, it would do the rebuilding again. Uh, obviously it would start the rebuilding at copying the requirements the work the app and the entry point is still coming from cache, so that's fine. And basically it's just collecting the requirements now. It should still be faster than before because we've moved the entry point script, but obviously it's doing the requirements again and again and again, copying the app code and then defining the entry point. Um, I think we're gonna end at 25 to 30 seconds. And yeah. You can obviously apply that uh, approach to different types of images. Okay, 32 seconds, still okay. But yeah, you see changing the requirements means you need to rebuild a big part of your image. So uh, you can apply that to a lot of different images. This is not only uh, applying to Python, this is also applying to Node, this is applying to Java and other programs that basically have a requirements file, even Go, if you use Go modules, for instance, you have like a requirement or a package file or a Go modules file, and you can use that, copy that file first, fetch your requirements, and then copy the, remainer, the remaining app. It just improves your build time so much. So uh, last but not least, you might ask, why do you wanna improve the build time other than just for improving the build time? It's a very good uh, question actually, and I have a very good answer for that. If you are running something like in-cluster debugging, which is a feature of Google Cloud Code, I think it's called Google Cloud Code, which is a plugin for the JetBrains IDEs, um, then you can basically set a breakpoint maybe not in base py of our settings, but maybe somewhere in our view, you can say, I wanna breakpoint here. I wanna see what's happening. And if you wanna debug that, not locally in your Docker setup, but basically on your Kubernetes cluster, then obviously you need some way to compile, to build the image locally, push it to a registry, and then deploy it in your cluster. That's fine, that's all been solved before. Uh, but what hasn't really been solved is how do you get updates of your code? Let's say you're adding a print statement here. How do you get such an update push to your Kubernetes cluster? Yeah, you can just uh, run Docker Compose build and then Docker push and then change the deployment to the new image with the new tag, etc., etc. Or you can use a tool like with Google Cloud Code and Scaffold that will watch for changes in your source code files and automatically push, build and push the image for you. And that 
thing that's being happening automatically uh, means every time you rebuild you're going through the whole process and everything that you can make sure that is cached which is basically everything above here just that one is not cached if you change the source code it will just help you in in the whole process so we'll see that maybe in, a, in another video using scaffold to debug uh, a python app i'm not sure if it works with python it works with go uh but yeah and that should basically just help you another reason obviously to improve that is uh, you can use that in a in a local registry cache so if you're using the same image over again and you're just changing the source code then you can use that in a local cache on your docker registry in your local one or even on a docker registry within your company or whatever you can you can create partial images as well if you need to uh, that's beyond that video although it will just help you to improve the timing all right uh Thanks basically for watching and obviously if you have any questions leave a comment in the video. Feel free to add a pull request or raise an issue in our GitHub repository. The link is below in the video description and see you next time.